Hey, Tom Donnie here. I'm gonna talk about crankshaft rebuilding. And part of the problem we've always had with crankshafts is what kind of fixture you use. And down here is a fixture I started, I started rethinking how would Saab have done it or how would you do it today with different technology. And I came up with several designs. This is a design we had right here that had a plate on top that we could move around. Anyway, long story short, we worked on this for over two years and it finally came up this is our fourth prototype, and I think I've got another one besides that, and we still have to make final changes on this before we can actually go into production and do crankshafts for profit with it. Up to now, we've only done experimental stuff. Um, we get tired of putting the same cranks together and apart just to see how things work. But this is a platform, so what we used to do is we used to have over here, this is how we used to build do cranks. That's how I've done them forever. And Larry Williams and I used to take bolts, and we literally would take them apart with, with bolts between the weights. Um, but you make all these plates, so these plates have to be moved over here to the press, so this piece would be gone. And these support in here, then these plates rest on these support plates. This is for your standard engines. And then these are for your GT Monte Carlos. This is a hybrid, so it'll, it'll take either or. But you have to make these plates, and these plates are very heavy. You love to catch fingers in them, and I'm, I'm kind of crippled up today. I just had carpal tunnel surgery a few days ago, so I'm kind of working one-handed. But anyway, um, this is how we did it, and you'd press it, and when you press it, everything would fall out. So if we come over here, this is the new design that I've come up with, and we've got a patent pending on this now, and it'll be the, the Donnie uh, uh, crank fixture. But uh, the crank is, is brought in like this. I don't have to drop it down through the holes like I've always done before. I don't have to have someone help catch it when it gets hit, when it's heavy. And all I gotta do now is do a press. So I've got it sitting here ready. You can just stay where you're at, Patty, so I'm... I just gotta line it up. And with this fixture, I've now got my first press done. Okay, simple and easy. I want to go to my second press. I just rotate my die plate. Put the crank up in here. I had a Monte Carlo GT, I'd use this spot here, rotate my plate, come back around, put this in. press but you can see how quick and easy go ahead how quick and easy all this works i just rotate my die plate and i no longer normally i would be having to go take these plates out use just these plates put these plates back in then these plates it's a back and forth effort that takes quite a while and is very uh, <laughs> hard on fingers and backs this one is pretty simple now so like I said, we've worked on this for over two years. But we finally, uh, finally got the patent applied for. And we hope to sell both an entire kit that would allow you to rebuild cranks yourself. Um, or if you're overseas and you don't think you want to uh, pay all the shipping because this is a very heavy apparatus, then uh, we're looking at uh, trying to do licensing fees 
where basically you'd pay a fee, you'd get a license, and you could make your make your own tool yourself. And we give you the the designs for it. And there you go. Now at this point, this crank has been pressed apart. I've got all three rods off, all three cages off, and see it's all pressed apart. Now all I gotta do is do my finish pressing, which is all real simple stuff. I'll finish this up. So I can take a crank apart now in about 12 minutes. Um, it's very fast, very simple, very easy to do. And uh, when I go back together, it's the same kind of thing. This plate rotates and it just, this die plate, and you change this die plate based on um, whatever crank you're doing. So if you're doing a DKW or a Polaris or a uh, Yamaha, whatever, um, you change this plate to match your rods and your bearings and all that stuff. So this fixture will work for almost any two-stroke two -stroke crankshaft. And um, that's kind of what we got going. So here's some of the tools we use in here. Uh, there's a lot of tools. I'm gonna, a lot of tools you need. I'm gonna grab the camera here, Patty. Um, a lot of tools used in pressing it apart, pressing it back together. Um, pretty much, you can put the camera on me now. Pretty much anyone can press them apart. Again, like Larry Williams and I did this, gosh, back in the, Mid, mid early 90s, we would press apart crankshafts um, with bolts. Do you see me on the camera? Mm -hmm. Looks like it's hanging somewhere else. No. But anyway, um, and then of course, uh, Bud Clark. I worked with Bud in the early, probably late 90s, early 2000s after Larry passed away. Bud taught me a lot. And then eventually it got to where I worked with David Bauer. And of course, David's gone now too. Um, but uh, David gave me tons of good help. And I've been to Sweden, been around, I've seen how other guys do it. This is, from what I can tell, it's, it's just hands down the most efficient, quickest way to work on these cranks. So again, we're either gonna sell the crank fixture and the tooling as a kit, and then you'd have training to come into, to come into probably Sturgis and get training to help uh, learn how to run, do it all. Um, or we would sell you a license fee so you could make all this fixture and give you the blueprint for that. But again, you'll get, get rid of all these plates and all these bearing press. I mean, we use these guys all the time too, these bearing press plates. I mean, it's just, it's slow, it's cumbersome, um, it busts fingers. So we're pretty excited about this, and I've talked to a few people to say, hey, if you ever want to build cranks, hold on, because we might have something, and again, we've got the patent pending now, so we can release this to the general public and talk about it. So it's the Donnie crank fixture, and uh, hopefully we can get a handful of people. My goal is for a handful of people around the country and then I mean, I don't even know if there's very many people in UK right now building cranks, but um, there was a guy, one guy in the USA building DKW cranks. He passed away a couple of years ago. All the tooling went who knows where, so there's nobody doing DKW cranks. Well, if I get a couple of DKW cranks, I can make a die plate for it real simple. We can mount it up, we can do DKW, bam. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Like I said, Polaris, uh, Yamaha, um, you know, Ski-Doo. Doesn't matter, we can do it, Bombardier. Do them all. So anyway, hopefully we can keep the technology, at least in the Saab world, alive way past my lifetime and on to future people. So if we got some young people out there who want to learn how to build cranks, um, that's the goal is to get the technology out, teach some more people this skill that's going to get lost otherwise. We don't want it to go by the wayside like what happened with the DKW. And uh, that's about all we got. So this is Tom from Fort Dodge and Sturgis signing off with our new crank tool.